Hey guys, welcome to the Tom Reefer Studio. Here's the 20 gallon cube again, mixed reef. 3.5 gallon Pico, that's LPS dominated. And here's the six gallon tall, and that's a mixed reef too. Over here we have the Peninsula Reef in progress. We get rid of this and this, back to Fish Guy Mike. Start adding from the bottom up. Today's Water Change Wednesday and it's all gonna happen right here. I gotta tell Dustin that he was right. You know, I can't make heads or tails of any of this stuff under here anymore, so I'm gonna start labeling it. Hey guys, Dustin, you're right. I'm doing it the low budget way though with the tape. Welcome to Water Change Wednesday, new viewers. What Water Change Wednesday is, you ask a question or leave a comment, any question you want, I'm up to now any question you want, below the video, and I'll answer it out there, and then I'll answer it here. I got to thinking too, unless I have some big extravaganza planned for Sunday's video, I'll answer some there because I'm getting more and more. So that'll be a great idea. And, uh, what else? What better way to start the first question off with Lord Fartknocker asks, can you go over dealing with dinos? I'm currently trying to managing them in my 10 gallon. Dinos, they are a real pain. The real word for dinos is dinoflagellates. Usually they come at the beginning of your tank, the beginning of your setup when you have low nutrient levels. Dinos are super interesting because they're mixotrophic. They're actually algae, but they also ingest their food, their prey. Getting rid of them isn't easy and it takes a long time. Even with any type of algae, guys, it takes a while. Some people think a few days. No, it takes weeks, sometimes a month to get rid of certain types of algae. So dinos usually occur because of really low nutrient levels, low nitrate and low phosphate. What a lot of reefers do is raise their levels of nitrate up by either adding a little more food, uh, maybe less water change. You wanna back off on your water changes if you have dinos. Get your water agitated and put a filter sock in your overflow box and collect all the dinos in there and pull them out. And you might have to do that daily for a few weeks or more. Thanks for your question, Lord Fartknocker. Mario asks, what do you have your intensity level set on your AI Prime 16 HD after setting up your spectrum? So I think what he means there is the photo period. So I start at 8 a.m. and I ramp it up. So all my blues in the 20 gallon are at 100%. That's kind of my newest setting. I went from 70% on the uh, blue and dark blue. I wanted even more blue light than I had. So right now, all my blue spectrum is 100%. My cool white is 70%. I start ramping at 8 o'clock a.m. and they ramp up to about 11. Then 11, I'm at 70% cool white and 100% blues and that goes straight across until I hit 5 o'clock. And then at 5 o'clock, 
I start to ramp down and my lights go out at nine o'clock with my AR Prime 16 HD. Little Hot Birds Eye Pepper asks about dipping live rock. He wants to use his live rock from another setup, but it has a lot of pests in there like flatworms and bristle worms. So his question is, does dipping his live rock kill beneficial bacteria? And he says he's got something called Magna Rapid X. I haven't heard of that, and it's supposed to kill all that stuff. But I understand what he's saying. He's thinking, will it kill the beneficial bacteria? So what I told him to do, regardless of what that does, he can dip his rock and do what's instructed with that Magnum X to kill off the flatworms. If you go really slow, you put them in a separate container. I would say for about two to three weeks, even longer, that will allow beneficial bacteria to build again. You can put one of the bottled bacteria in there. I use... I've had great luck with this. Stability. It's just beneficial bacteria. So whatever that Magnum X is, it's not going to kill everything off. You know, you have bacteria deep within the rock. Joanne asked how to handle a nitrite and ammonia spike. And I wasn't sure whether she was in the process of cycling or that this just happened in her everyday tank experience and suddenly it spiked. If you're getting a spike in nitrite or ammonia, that means your bacteria within your tank isn't enough to control whatever ammonia is entering in the tank. So uh, whether something died in there or she put something in that was dead or had ammonia in it, the thing I told her to do was an extremely large water change. She had said she did 50%, but I would almost go 100%. If you have ammonia in your water and you have inhabitants and animals in there, then I would do as much as you possibly can water change. And then I also recommended the reef stability uh, sea chem stability. That's once again beneficial bacteria and that'll consume the ammonia and nitrite. So I told her to try that. RC Outlaw asked a question about vacuuming his sand bed. We get quite a few but I don't mind answering them because they're related in different ways. Uh, he's got a goby in there, a sand sifter who likes to eat pods and things like that and his concern was would vacuuming the sand bed deplete the pod population so his goby wouldn't have stuff to eat. Unless you're experiencing high phosphate levels, guys, or high nitrate levels. You really don't need to vacuum, but from my experience, over time, you will have high phosphate levels. So what I think I recommended to him was to do a portion at a time. You don't have to do your entire sand, but maybe you do one quarter of it and then you wait a week and do the other one the following week or the next water change. Vacuuming your sand bed is only really necessary if you have a real high phosphate level and you're getting some unwanted algae growing. That's the biggest thing. If you don't have any unwanted algae growing, then don't worry about it. Don't vacuum unless you need to. We can always answer a pH question, right guys? Adam asks, I know it's not good to chase pH, well, good or bad, you could if you want. But how can I increase pH for better coral growth? There's a couple ways, uh, but pH is tricky. The first way is calcwasser. When you add calcwasser to your ATO, your ATO water is a 12 pH. So that will increase your pH in your aquarium. The other way to increase your pH is a skimmer helps because it's oxygenating the water. A lot of lower pH, and he may not realize that his pH isn't too low. If you're 7.8 and above, you're fine. If you start to drop below 7.7 .7 and you're down around 7, then you should do something. If you drop below 7.7 .7, around there, you should probably do something. A lot of it has to do with where your aquarium is also. Like I have a window here. Uh, I know there's good air circulation. A lot of it has to do with what's around the tank. Low pH is most likely excess 
carbon dioxide in your water. So that's why good oxygen exchange will help. The other thing is refugium. Your refugium can be used to consume the excess CO2. That's why it's so good to have reverse photo period with lights on in the day for photosynthesis. And when they go out, the CO2 level doesn't rise if you have a refugium, it'll use that. Jose asks about calcium and alkalinity, and he says his readings are really fluctuating. For example, uh, his alk can be about 7.3 to 8.5 when it's low, and when it's high, it's between 9.5 to 10. And when he's there, which is okay, 9.5 to 10 is okay. That's good, it's fine, I wouldn't worry about that. But when he's there, he says his calcium levels are crazy high. He didn't tell me what they were. The first thing I told him to do was test his salt water with his testers. You know, when people say they get really extremely different readings, I often wonder if it's the tester. So I told him mix up a fresh batch of salt water and test calcium and alkalinity there. So if they test what the manufacturer says they should test, then he knows his test kits are fine. At that point, I think he needs to dial in on his two-part dosing a little better. Go slow, start slow. They have to be equal amounts, equal amount of calcium and equal amounts of alkalinity. Do that first, get those balanced, and see how it goes. If calcium is a little low, then he can add a little calquasser in his ATO to help boost that. You don't want to add more calcium or alkalinity in a two-part. They're meant to go in equally. Thanks, Jose. All right, guys, I think we've gotten a lot tonight, and I'll finish the rest on Sunday. I'm also going to Fish Guy Mike, so we have some different stuff in store. All right, I'll see you on the next one. I think that's Sylvia calling me. Take care now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, I